And we have monsters here with us. Yeah, a zombie monster that moves with music. Yep. So how, this is our Christmas monster. Because this is our Christmas show. <laughs> Alright, I'm trying to turn him off. Alright, he, he won't go off. And go off. Well, he's being a pest. Okay. Boy, that's a long time. There he there goes. There he is. <laughs> Finally. Oh, my God. That was awesome. All Not. right. <laughs> well, uh, I guess this is a Merry Christmas to everyone, and welcome to Conversations in the Horror. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, my name is Kevin L. Powers. And I'm Ron McClellan. And we're here today to speak about some of the great horror Christmas films out there. Yes, we are. I mean, uh, the holidays are very famous for having some of the great horror films out there, Halloween being one of them, and Black Christmas being another one. Yes, Black Christmas. The original Black Christmas. <laughs> but And this week, uh, we decided to dedicate the entire show to our love of Christmas-themed horror films, which is appropriate. Oh, speaking of Black Christmas, uh, the 1974, I believe, film... Uh, directed by Bob Clark is one of my favorites. That is a good one. My favorite, though, Christmas horror film is probably, I know it's campy and I know it's stupid, but I like Billy. <laughs> Silent Night, Deadly Night. Silent Night, Deadly Night. Yes. Well, I really like the kills in Silent Night, Deadly Night. It, uh, the original one uh, is actually has some very fun kills in it. Uh, if you remember, and there was a lot of con controversy surrounding the film. Itself. 1984, there was a lot of controversy in 84. Yeah, well, it was a bloody film that uh, uh, it was one of the first to do horror on, how, uh, how, <laughs> horror on Christmas. Uh, and I guess that didn't sit well with a lot of the parents out there. So it was banned in a lot of different places when it originally came out. Was it really? Yeah. Yep, uh, a lot of places, a lot of uh, parents uh, picked it outside theaters and played it, and it was pulled eventually. Uh, but that didn't stop it from being uh, one of the all-time cult favorite horror films out there for us horror fans. So then you had part two in 87, which was just Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Then you have Silent Night, Deadly Night 3. Yes, which had uh, early Bill Mosley, I believe, in there. And then you have part four, Initiation. Which is one of my favorite sequels. And part five, The Toymaker, which is ridiculous. Ridiculously bad. It, yes, it is horrible. I actually like part four, though, because part four was directed by uh, Brian Usna, and that was took the whole thing out of the realm of possibilities. I, you know, I think it's mentioned that it takes place around Christmas, but other than that, it's really a witchcraft type of movie and not so much an actual... Christmas movie. And it had a Bond girl in it, yes. Maud Adams. Maud Adams was in there, who is was really well cast in that movie, if you, if you remember it. <laughs> and then there was the 2012 remake, Silent Night, directed yep. by Stephen Miller. Yep, uh, which had Malcolm McDowell in it, which is uh, actually a, a coup for the film, since it didn't go theatrical, unfortunately. Um, but uh, having Malcolm McDowell in it, which also he did the remake of Halloween, was actually very good for the film itself. Yeah, it was a good marketing strategy. Yeah. Because he's the only star in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are some of your, your other favorite uh, Christmas-themed movies? All right, we're, we're going to get on IMDb right here, and we're going to look up a very scary Christmas movie that I remember from back in the day. It was called... Uh, I forgot what it's called. That's why I got to get on IMDb. Well, I got one for you. How What's about that? Gremlins? Gremlins was a Christmas movie. Yes, it, it took was. place at Christmas. It took place at Christmas. <laughs> it did take place at Christmas. <laughs> uh, I really loved it. And the fact that, you know, it was a Christmas-themed uh, horror-slash-comedy is actually one of the reasons why I loved it so much. And then there's Satan Claus, which came out in 96. No, I, I never saw that one. That one just kind of looked kind of weird it's to me. It's just horrible. Horrible, but yeah. I love it. Yes, but I think you gave me a copy of that. I just haven't I watched it yet. I gave copies to everyone for Christmas. <laughs> I think uh, maybe this year will be a good year for me to actually sit down and actually watch the movie. I'm yes. sure a lot of people are looking forward to me actually reviewing that movie like I do so many other very bad movies, or very bad horror films, anyways. Uh, I remember 
we did a movie five years ago, four years ago, called And All Through the House. Mm hmm. Subtitled A Creature Was Stirring, but it wasn't a mouse. Uh, prior to that, Tales from the Crypt had a, their very first episode was a Christmas episode called, in the first season, called And All Through the House. Mm hmm. And it had the girl from Dallas in it. What was her name? Uh, I'm not sure, but I do remember Larry Drake being the uh, serial killer Santa Claus. Oh, if no, you remember, he was not in this one. Not in this one. In this one, it was. Unless I'm mistaken, I may be mistaken. We're gonna find out in a second. Uh, yeah, he was the Santa yeah. Claus. He was the Santa Claus. And if you remember Larry Drake, he was in Dark Knight of the Scarecrow and Dark Man. And maybe the one I'm thinking about that has the lady from Dallas was in not in Tales from the Crypt, but Tales from the Dark Side. Hmm. Could be. I can't remember. Well, regardless, you know, Christmas themed horror has been around for a very long time. Um and, uh, you know, anthologies uh, have always done Christmas-themed horrors. And you'll, I mean, there's, Tales from the Crypt actually did several of them. But and All Through the House being the most famous because it was actually uh, a remake of one of the shorts that was shown in the um, British version of Tales from the Crypt, the movie. So, it's very famous. Oh, I see you're looking up one of my favorite horror films of Christmas time, which is uh, Rare Exports: A Christmas Tale. Yeah, if you've that's if you've never seen that one, that that uh, that's a very special movie in which uh, Santa Claus is the Santa Claus are an actual creature that need to be tamed. <laughs> it's a, a crazy funny movie that's actually really really good. Uh, so if you haven't seen uh, Rare Exports, I highly recommend it. And for all of you wrestling fans, there's always Santa. Saint- I keep wanting to say Satan. Santa's Slay, spelled S-L-A-Y, and it starred WCW wrestler or WWE wrestler Bill Goldberg. Which I've never seen that one yet either. <laughs> and Jack Frost. Good old Jack Frost. That was about as campy as you can possibly get, but still fun to watch. Which I have seen, and I don't plan on seeing any again anytime soon. And getting back to what we were talking about earlier with Black Christmas, I guess Black Christmas is one of my top just fun to watch and kick back and be scared Christmas horror films. The original and the remake. I liked them both. Some people didn't like the remake so much because they're just diehard original fans. But I actually like both of them. What about you? You like them? Yes, I'm a very big fan of the uh, original. It's one of my favorite Bob Clark movies. Uh, Also including uh, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. But... um, you know, there was so the, the the original one was so complex with its story. I mean, uh, a lot more so than the remake. The remake was one of the most fun, multicolored uh, Dario Argento inspired uh, Christmas candy corn is how I like to describe the remake done by Glenn Morgan, uh, director Glenn, Glenn Morgan from the Final Destination and the Willard remake and all that type of stuff. Uh, he's been around a long time, and that one was like a cornucopia of Christmas colors, if you if you enjoyed that. In 1972, before Silent Night, Deadly Night ever came out, there was Silent Night, Bloody Night, which you can find on a lot of these multiple movie box sets. Yeah, so if you haven't seen that one yet, just go buy one of those $5 versions of the 200 movies on the four disc sets, and you'll find that one. That one's very prevalent. Yeah, it's from 1972, and it's actually a really good movie. I liked it. Yeah, it was not that bad. Um, it's dated a little bit, but hey, most stuff from 1972 in horror genre is dated. Mm-hmm. Then there's Don't Open Till Christmas. I've been trying to find that movie everywhere. I'm pretty sure it's out of print. I've not seen but that one either. I want it really bad because I saw it when I was a kid and it freaking scared me to death. And I thought, okay, this is the greatest Christmas horror movie ever made. And now I cannot find it. The poster is a present with a butcher knife stuck in it. And sitting in a puddle of blood. And it's the people who did pieces. Oh, okay. It's kind of like they did pieces and then they did Do Not Open Till Christmas. You can find pieces everywhere, but you can't find Do Don't Open Till Christmas. And I don't know why. Because I really want to see it again. 
But, because uh, Christmas horror films are taboo. Well, aren't they? <laughs> God. They are. And then there's Feeders 2, Sleigh Bells. And, uh, I've never seen that one, so I don't know what that one entails. In fact, I don't know if I would ever want to watch it. They're alien to another planet. They're here to overtake our planet. I just love the holidays. Baby Santa will bring me some sanity <laughs> I don't know if I want to see that one. That one looks a little subpar even for me. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know about all that. That's, But it was a funny little trailer for what little bit I saw. <laughs> it looked like it cost about $50 to make. But hey, there you go, buddy. There you go. Here's one. Have you ever seen The Children? I have. I want to see The Children really bad. The Children actually is a really good movie. Um, good winter movie. In fact, uh, where all the children suddenly become uh, killers and uh, try and kill their parents. Uh, it's actually a very good psychological film, and there's some a couple Blade moments in there that you're not expecting. Um, but it, it's pretty good. I like the subtitle. You brought them into this world, they will take you out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. And looking up on the ultimate horror Christmas movie list on the Internet, Ultimate Horror Christmas Movie List. Here it is. I know you'll find on there P2 if you remember that one. Oh, yes. 1224. I remember I remember. I wanted to see that. That came out about four or five years ago, maybe six years ago. And is it's Christmas Eve, and a group of disparate characters are heading home for a night when the dead begin to rise and seek human flesh who will survive this holiday onslaught. So that's a zombie... Christmas it movie. Is a zombie. I have not seen that one, so I guess I'm gonna have to look forward to that one. All right, here's another new one that I've not heard about: uh, A Christmas Nightmare. Hmm. Hmm. After witnessing the brutal assassination of presidential candidate Francis Mohan, a young married couple, Edward and Alice Anderson, are taken to a safe house miles from civilization on Christmas Eve. Hmm. Never seen that one. Never even heard of that one. So this will. I want to see Bikini Blood Blad Christmas. I'm just saying. <laughs> that sounds like the perfect getaway, and with if you have some drinking and friends. There's all these weird Christmas movies. You got Bloody Christmas, 2012. You have Chopping I did, I did Mall. Know, I did not know Chopping Mall took place at Christmas. I don't think it did. Yes, it did. Did it really? It's a small. It's a small aspect of the story. Uh, like a lot of Christmas themed uh, films, they just take place during the holidays and. Re kind of forget that they are Christmas themed because there's no killer Santa Claus and no killer snowman or anything like that. You know there's so many killer Santa Clauses in these movies. Silent Night, Deadly Night, Silent Night, Bloody Night. And now I remember one Christmas Evil. It had a mm -hmm. Psycho Santa, the Tales from the Crypt, and All Through the House. My and All Through the House had a Psycho Santa. In I actually really enjoyed that one. There's the Christmas Season Massacre. You know that film has a Psycho Santa without even watching it. So, uh, let's see what it says. Uh, Tommy is a loser. He wears an eye patch. A Christmas gift was given to him as a child. It is a symbol of the humiliation Tommy endured in high school. So, obviously, Tommy is going to don a Santa Claus <laughs> suit. Hmm, that hasn't been done. And start killing people. Oh, why right price? Buddy. <laughs> There's Christmas with the Dead. Not heard of that one. Not heard of that one either. Darkest Night. Not heard of that one. I did not know Dead End was about. Uh, yeah, it takes place on Christmas Eve. I've not seen Dead End yet. That was uh, that's on my list of films to see. I have not caught that one yet. Oh, and here's one from 1945 for all you guys who like the really old horror films, called Dead of Night, which mm. takes place on Christmas Eve. It looks like oh, at a Alberto Cavalcanti's, who I've not heard of, ghost story about a mysterious young girl during a Christmas party. Hmm. 1945. That's really not it. the Dead of Night that I've seen. No. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. Deadly Little Christmas, 2009. First there was Halloween, then Friday the 13th. Now there's the scariest day of all. Ooh, <laughs> okay. Christmas. If any of you have using the Don't Open Till Christmas. Oh, never mind. It's above that one. <laughs> oh God, I remember Elves. Remember Elves? I never saw oh, Elves. Oh, Elves was crazy. Uh, is it anything like trolls? It. No, well, kind of. <laughs> kind of, but... Da -da -doom. I, Dan yeah. Haggerty, uh, who a lot of people knew as 
Um, who was Dan Haggerty? He was Grizzly Adams. Oh, okay. So, he was in it. I'll have to look that one up. Elves. <laughs> Poster looks interesting, though. It was directed by Jeffrey Mandel. Who's nobody. <laughs> but, oh, the gingerbread man. There's another one. Ginger de- dead man? Ginger dead man, yeah. <laughs> You're right. Uh, yeah, well, they keep those going. Uh, if you didn't know, they're probably on number four or five by now. Ginger dead man. They keep cranking out those sequels. Exactly. And Hates Haunted Sleigh Ride, 2010. Home <laughs> for the Holidays, 1972. Never seen those. There is a lot of Christmas-themed horror films I've yet to see, obviously. I want to see Nixon and Hogan smoke Christmas. <laughs> okay. There's even a Nutcracker horror movie. Nutcracker. Which you can watch anytime you want, apparently. Nutcracker, an American uh, Nightmare. Yep. A Sounds A psychologist uses advanced brainwave technology that allows him to see into the minds of his patients, but it backfires on him, and he sees... His own repressed memory, killing his father and placing the blame on his brother, who was confined to a mental institution. How much you want to bet he puts on a Santa Claus suit and starts killing again? I'm just saying. <laughs> so let me ask you a question, Ron. Yep. What do you think makes a good Christmas horror film? Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. That's okay. That's the greatest. That's, that's it. Watch that movie and you'll see what makes a good Christmas horror film. <laughs> Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, 1964. <laughs> Great movie. Great movie. The elves are scary. Santa Claus is not. Is Finally. It? Finally, Santa Claus is not. Is it a, a great movie like Plan 9 from Outer Space? That's is a great what movie? It is like, oh, okay. Yeah. Just making sure because I've never seen the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's weird. Christmas horror films are weird. Way too many evil Santa Clauses. Uh, that's primarily what you see in them, I think. You know, or killers at Christmas parties. You know, so that's, that about sums it up for a whole lot of them. <laughs> I mean, what 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 is uh, the what do you think is the fascination of Christmas themed horror films? I mean, we've seen the Halloween ones. That's the most obviously obvious ones are Halloween themed. I horror think that's films. got a lot to do with it. But Christmas, uh, a time that usually is happy, jovial, family type time. And then we have these tons of horror films that kind of slay and destroy Christmas. Well, there's a lot of them that aren't really about Christmas. They just happen to take place at Christmas. And, you know, those are okay. But the ones that are just directly marketing Christmas, exploiting Christmas, you know, that's different altogether. It's, you know, kind of... All right, well, they've done Halloween. Let's do something for Christmas. Because they've done something with Valentine's Day. They've done something with birthdays. They've done something with New Year's Day. They even did something with Thanksgiving, I believe. But I don't know if uh, Eli Roth actually did that or not. <laughs> I, no, he's just done the trailer. <laughs> there is no movie Thanksgiving just yet. <laughs> just We're yet. waiting. As far as Christmas movies go, you know, I think it's more just exploiting the holiday, just something else to make a horror film out of. And I just wish they would, someone would get a little more original. I mean, even myself, I had a killer Santa Claus in my film, but at least I tried to do some other stuff in it. Like I did a kind of a modernized, twisted take on A Christmas Carol part of it. It was kind of that going on. And we had voodoo and all other kinds of stuff just to break up the fact that there's an evil, murderous Santa Claus in the film. <laughs> well, it seems that a lot of people kind of come expecting something like that, but when you give something that's not so transparent, they tend to go for it. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, one of my favorites is uh, Gremlins, and, you know, P2 I enjoyed a lot, and P2 just takes place on Christmas. Right. Uh and then, of course, there's Child's Play. If you've forgotten, Child's Play does take place around Christmas. Oh, yeah. The whole point of Chucky is as a, as a toy for the son for Christmas. Uh, stuff like that, I really enjoy. There's no Killer Santa Claus in any of those films. But I do have to admit, my, one of my favorites that has a Killer Santa Claus is, of course, Rare Exports, which I will always put on my top five list of, uh, of uh, great uh, Christmas-themed films. Uh, so like I said, if you haven't seen it, I do uh, think you should go out there and find it. 
Rare export. Burial now. I didn't know it was a foreign film. So, if you're listening, we're actually watching the trailer since Ron's never seen it and I own it and have seen it several times. Looks like a really good movie, too. Looks like it would be a good movie. It's one of those foreign films that, foreign horror films that are like Troll Hunter. It's, it's so different and unexpected that when you're watching it, it's just amazing. Um, it's from Finland. And it's mostly told from the perspective of a kid. So it almost is like, has this fairy tale aspect to it. So, there you go. There you go. Another one that uh, is a foreign film, and you can look this one up also, is called, is also Saint. Uh, which is also a good horror film that's also uh, more for the action horror junkie. <laughs> that's another good one out there, if you haven't seen Saint. Saint is a film about what? It is, well, I don't know the specifics because it's been a while since I saw it. And that's what happens when you watch way too many of these horror films. You tend, they all tend to run into each other. Uh, but Saint was directed by the same guy who did uh, Amsterdam, if you remember that movie. I know it's been a long time and people have forgotten about so certain films like that, but you remember the movie Amsterdam, he also did this. So it's been a while since he's been out there and, you know, did his horror film. <laughs> Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. Santa Claus is coming to town. It's all <laughs> night. Michael McDowell had to play it. It's guilty pleasure. Well, Love he that movie. he was echoing what he did in you know uh, the Halloween remake, and at the time people wanted to see him kick ass and take names, and that's what he was doing. <laughs> he sure did. I mean, his and his kills were interesting too. He wasn't in that movie. I, it wasn't just okay, kill, 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 kill. You know, they were actually very interesting, and I liked them. Mm -hmm. I liked everything about it. Yep. Well, you know, that's horror films for you. Uh, especially modern day horror films. I'd wish they made more Christmas themed ones, but it just doesn't really happen. What usually happens is what's happening now is uh, studios release uh, films during Christmas times as counter programming. Um, this year, we will have seen the release of The Pyramid, oddly enough, produced. Uh, by Alexander Aja, who did um, P2. So, you know. Uh, and, of course, we all know that the original Scream was released around this time, too, and it was counter-programming by Merrimax and them for the Christmas holiday. And, you know, what was another one? Wolf Creek was also released during this time of year. I mean, yeah, studios always release a horror film during Christmas time. It's counter-programming okay. for all the, you know, the normal films out there. Christmas Day is one of the biggest days of the year for moviegoers. It is. So why not put a counter-programming film out there? All right. I guess one final thing for Christmas. We're going to take a little listen to some Silent Night, Bloody Night from 74, trailer action. I think we are. There's a girl walking. There's no sound. Very scary. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie, and so I barely remember it. I just remember it not being one of my favorites. <laughs> well, it was a little dated, like I said. You recognize him? Uh, yes. John Carradine? I forgot he was in that movie. Oh, my God. Maybe I will have to pull that one out again and rewatch it. Well, not bloody not John Carradine. <laughs> Oh, my God. I think it's a British film. Someone needs to British. remake that movie. I think it's a British film. I'll remake it. they will remake it? I'll have to get somebody to play John Carradine. We just call it Bloody Night. Bloody Night. Silent Night, Bloody Night. Remake. <laughs> it's probably in public domain. Uh, well, it is on those DVDs with 200 films uh, for five bucks. <laughs> so that's why I say it's probably in, in, in bl bloody public domain. All right, so Kevin, any final thoughts well, before we end this Christmas episode of Conversations in Horror? I would like everyone to make sure to stock up on your um, Christmas horror films and make sure to watch as many as you can before uh, Christmas because 
well, you don't want to be watching horror films on Christmas with the family. I know it would be great, but we... I do. Oh, you do. But we can't do that. <laughs> we got to be with the family, so you got to get your, your, your horror on before. Uh, but like I said, there's some great ones. P2, Silent Night, Daily Night, uh, Silent Night, Black Christmas, Gremlins. And if you want to see my scary little horror comedy film and all through the house, just go to YouTube and search and all through the house and check it out. It's online right now for you to uh, to hear or see. <laughs> you hear us. You see that. All right. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. All that cool stuff. Peace out, my brothers. Take it back, kids. Conversations in Horror is copyright 2014. Broken Lighthouse Pictures.